Hey everybody, so now we're in Tableau. Here's a great article, multi-back relationship data models. It's a really powerful feature. If you ever run into an instance where you have one fact table and you have a dimension table and you're like, man, I really wanna join my dimension table to another fact table and do a comparison of say my marketing data to my sales data. This new update is the greatest thing that has come out for Tableau in a while. I've been really excited about this update since last year. It was announced at the conference and now it is available it's live and i'm finally making a video on it very high level video but if you're familiar with star schema data architecture just basic concepts of data modeling you love this feature this feature is amazing so let's go ahead and hop into why this is awesome why this is familiar and i'll show you an example in tableau so let's start with our data and our data set i have a sales table that is basically superstore and it has information from 2020 to 2018 and I made a duplicate of it and I just changed the dates to where my earliest date is 2021, but then my latest date is 2024. And then I made a regions table. But in this example, I also want to create a date table so that I can join my calendar table to my two sales facts tables and do a comparison. So one way you can do this in Excel is to quickly create a date table. You can use Power Query, which is awesome. Um, all you have to do is just Google how to create a date table in uh, Power Query, great article by Rick DeGroote. I use this every single time I need to use it in Power Query. Uh, ultimately, if you have a, a calendar table at the source and whatever you're using, so if you're using a database, um, anything Snowflake, it's best to use a calendar table there. But this one lets you create one quickly in Excel and it's a really awesome feature. So what you wanna do is a great article to check out, but let's go ahead and copy the M code and then we'll go ahead and go into Excel and then we'll go to get data and then we will then uh, go to our from other services and then select blank query. Now what this is does, it opens up M, which is a language in uh, Microsoft world, but we're just going to go to advanced editor and we're going to just copy and paste that code in here. So now what we're going to do here, the biggest piece that we want to make sure we focus on is the start date and end date. So the biggest piece your start date is we want to make sure that we have the earliest date in here in our data set. You can use some M language in here, but it's easy just to hard code it for this example. So that's what I'm going to do today. And then our end date is just going to be based on the end of year of today. So it's going to go all the way to the end of 2024 and create a date table there. But I'm going to go ahead and do 2018. I feel like that's the earliest date in my data set. And now what you see is an actual date table. You see a record for each individual record. Uh, each individual date. And then you have the date integer, year, year default, a lot of columns in here that make this table wide that for Tableau, you might not be used to. Tableau does a really good job of automatically doing this for you, but the column itself, the table itself, I should say, becomes a lot wider. You have a lot of great columns in here and you can do a lot of cool things. But this is an example of how you can generate a date table. And what we're gonna do is just call this date, hit enter, and then we're gonna select close, and then we're gonna select load to new worksheet uh, because we're adding this to our Excel sheet. And then now we have our date table. So come in here and save it. Now we have a date table. We have a date category for every single date for the range that we selected. So let's go ahead and close this and hop in Tableau. All right, now that we're in Tableau, we have created that connection to our Excel worksheet. So now you'll see that we have our sales, sales v2, and our date field that we just created. So for our base table, we're gonna pull in our sales table, and then what we're gonna do is add our date category here. And then we're just gonna select that order and the date to our date. And then we're gonna bring in our base table. And then we wanna join that to our date. And then now we're going to select our order date here. And then we're gonna do our date here. So now as you can see, we have two fact tables. And then as you're building out stuff in Tableau, 
your your fact tables should be your base tables. They're your core components of it. They're information that you want to see, and they are what you want to create. And then now you have your dimension tables, which are now relating to your two fact tables. And another thing as well, um, when you're thinking about a star schema approach and why this is important, you have your fact tables, which are your tables that has your transactions. So if you think about star schema in the middle, these are your transaction, anything that you quantify, your sales, your returns, anything you quantify is typically in the middle of it. And then you have your dimension tables, which would have like your product, your product name, your product category, uh, time is the date table we just created. You have your customer, employee, right? Anything that is descriptive, categorical, typically are your dimension tables. And what we just did was create a separate fact table and add that to our model. So in this example, we created a fact table which is now joined into our timetable and it's called sales v2 so now with our multi-fact we have one dimension table that will allow us to do some analysis from our original sales table and then our new sales table that we just created so that's what we did in tableau that's the multi-fact analysis so let's go ahead and go back into Tableau just to show you what this looks like. So we connected this, we have our information on here now. And if we go start doing our analysis, we see if we bring in our date field, let's actually bring it in as discrete, discrete. All right, and then if we go to our first sales table, let's say we wanna bring in our sum of sales. We'll just do sum of sales. Uh, we brought this in, I actually want this to be an aggregate. So wants this to be a table, I should say, not an aggregate. But we bring this in, we see that we have our values in here now, and everything stops at 2021 20, because that's the date that we have in our particular data set. But because we're using our dimension table, our dimension table, our date table goes further. So basically we don't have any records in here, but we're still showing the records that we need from our date perspective. So now as we bring in our sales V2 category in here now, we're gonna bring our sum of sales, we're gonna drag it in here on the table. And then now you can see when I drag over it that we have records from our sales. Let me switch this around, let's make sure original. So you see our sum of sales stops at 2021, like I talked about. But then as our sales for 2022 go about, now we're able to see sales that are higher and longer because we're using our dimension category. So because we're using a dimension, we're able to go further beyond with our analysis. It doesn't stop at the first fact table, which dates have stopped. We're actually leveraging our dimension table, which has longer dates, further dates, and we're able to leverage that. And then now we can just create a calculation to show a variance. So if I want to create a quick calculation, that is sum of sales minus uh, sum of this, we'll call it variant. And we'll hit apply. We'll see now we're actually able to do an analysis between our two fact tables. So we're looking at three different tables and they all have a relationship. So two fact tables, one dimension table, and then now we're able to do analysis between the two. Beforehand, you would have to just do a whole bunch of stuff to get the stuff to work between different fact tables. Your data model might not necessarily have been optimized. It could just been a lot of stuff. But now because of the multi-fact analysis, this is a lot easier, a lot faster. A lot more performant um, to just be able to give you insights a lot faster. So I love multi-fact analysis. It's fantastic. It's great. Um, so if you move into Power BI, we're basically we do the exact same concept, but we're going to build out a data model that has two fact tables, one dimension tables, and then you just bring it in. So if I go to Power BI and I have my model built out, my dimension table is this, my sales is this. I like left to right, so it's going to drive me crazy. Uh, so my first sales is on the left, my V2 is on the right. I have it brought in. So if we do the exact same thing of my date of categories here. And then if I do my sum of sales for this instance, we'll see the same number. Uh, the biggest piece here, as I showed earlier, is that there are some values in our date field that are not currently being displayed. So as you notice, January 2nd, January 1st, uh, January 8th are not shown up here but they are in our data set. So one thing that you can do in Power BI is to show values that are not being represented. That way you at least can see the value there. So you do that, you click on date and you will select show items. Get down here. 
All right, so you would do that and select show items with no data. And this would then open up and show your values. So now you see the no values are being displayed and don't have any data, but our dates are still relevant in our data set. So we do that. And if we go to sales V2 and go and bring in our sum of sales from V2, as we did earlier, scroll down. And once we get to our data that has records, because I think it starts in 2021 for our data set, we will then see your information in here. So now you're able to see information based on the date in our data set. And we have multi-factor analysis. We do the exact same variance calculation and it'll be great. So I love multi-factor analysis. I'm so glad that I can use the same dimension table and join it to multiple facts and just have a very more performant uh, data model. It makes my life much easier. It makes architect's life much easier. It's just great. So this is one of my favorite features that came out in Tableau. Um, and Power BI just data modeling, but I love it. It's great. So are you using this feature? Have you done this stuff or with it already? Let me know if you're doing some cool stuff. Send me some blogs, send me some content on it. And we'll talk to y'all next week for Technology Tip Thursday. Have a great day. Thank you.